Hi, I'm Peter from Peel and I'm going to show you some neat uh, functions. Here's our uh, scan surfboard. It's a very large file. You can see the targets on it. And the first thing I want to show you is that we use the fill positioning targets function. That fills the texture underneath the targets. So if I turn off the targets, you can see how it did it. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Um, next thing we're going to, I want to work on something a little bit smaller than this very large file, but um, I want to show you the texture file so that you can see what the texture file looks like. So that's the texture file for the whole of the surfboard and it's fitted into a 4096 by 4096 um, uh, image and it's draped onto the scan shape. I'm now going to do a bit of uh, work here um, on a part of the surfboard and I want to fill in some holes that are on the sides and, uh, and generally improve the mesh where it's missing. So as soon as you edit, first of all I'm going to cut, a, cut myself off a, a shark sized chunk of this surfboard um, and we'll work on that part. So I just go into select through and my select tool and holding down the control key, I can select a shape that um, enables me to cut out part of this scan and copy it elsewhere, by the way. So there we go. And I go up to copy and it creates another mesh, which is a, just a copy of that but it's, it's smaller. I'm going to turn off the other mesh. In fact, I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. And I still got the original scan. And now we've got our um, shark, shark, shark sized chunk of surfboard. And I'm going to show you a few tricks to heal these holes that you can see. And in fact, fill in the end of that surfboard. And bearing in mind that this thing has texture on it, but not, of course, for the the hole, the large hole where we cut away. So I'm going to have a look at, it'll be interesting to see how it does the texture on these three holes on the edge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, clean the mesh because it's uh, meshes that frequently have, oh, sorry, I'm going to show you the uh, texture file again, just to show you that it's holding the whole texture file, even though we've only got a part of the part of the part and I'm now going to do the clean mesh I promised to do and meshes have a lot of faults and this is an automatic tool to go through all the possible faults in a in a mesh and you can see that there's isolated patches self interaction spikes small holes all sorts of things and so I'm going to just simply apply but you get a warning there that the texture will be removed lifted from the shape as soon as you do any of these functions. So there it goes, the texture has been lifted and I'm asking it to apply all these corrections to clean up the mesh. And in fact, I realize that I have forgotten to get the narrow bridges. I didn't check that box. So I'm gonna check it, apply it again, and it's gonna clear away the narrow bridges. I've now got a, a very clean mesh and we'll start looking at how we fill in these holes. In fact, there's a, there's a bit of a mess at the end of that board. I'm gonna just chop that off. We've got some really good editing tools. Again, I, I'm using select through, so I select through all, the, all parts and I'm getting those noise particles as well and I'm just gonna remove them. So we now have a reasonable effort. The, the back end of the board is not too good, but we're going we're gonna to try and fix that up. So we're going to do some hole filling here, and we're going to start with the low curvature holes, which are the easiest to do. You just click on the holes and it does a pretty good job. I'm not going to do that hole there because it's actually a high curvature hole. So we'll just go and, um, yeah, we click on high curvature and then we can do the high curvature holes. 
the ones with tight curvatures in them. It's done a pretty good job on that. Could be improved. And there's two on the underside that I can do in low curvature mode. And I think that's the end of the low curvature easy hole fills. So we're going to accept those ones so that they get registered. And then we're going to go back and do some more difficult work on these big holes. And what I'm going to start by doing is drawing a bridge across these notches so that they fill better with the automatic hole fill function. And that's the bridge function in the hole fill function. And I just choose three points on one side to define where I want my bridge. And then three points, left, right, and middle, on the other side of my bridge. And it builds a flat bridge. And I'll do the same on the second hole. Now, if you think about it here, we're creating surface that was never scanned and so doesn't have any texture, and we'll come to that later. Now I can do an easy hole fill with uh, low curvature on that part, and now I can go and look at that very large hole, and it's probably will do quite a good auto fill. Choose low curvature, hole, full hole fill, and that's not too bad, but I've got a few little um, problems within my mesh there, and so I'm going to deal with that. And the uh, I'm going to uh, build a little bridge, I think. No, I'm going to accept my original holes. And then go build a bridge across this, this gap here. Same method. One, two, middle. One, two, middle. And fill that hole with the full hole fill function at low curvature. So now we've kind of solved that, but we've got a very jagged edge along um, this shark bite, if you like. So we're going to edit this boundary. And that's pretty easy to do. It's the edit boundary function, which is there. And I choose this boundary, and then I put the, a curve tension on it. And if you look, I can, you can see the green line becoming straighter and straighter. If you go too straight, it's too much tension. But that's a pretty good selection there. So I just say apply, and it smooths my boundary. And I'll accept that. But what I didn't notice is for some reason on the left side, I didn't smooth that enough. So I can do a partial boundary smooth. And that's the same function, except it's a partial boundary button, which is that one. And I choose the part of the boundary that interests me, which is one, two, and the part. And again, I can adjust the tension and, and pretty much clear that up. So now we've got a pretty nice clean cut along the end of that um, surfboard. I am going to do a clean mesh because there's a few more spikes and things come into the um, equation during our edits. So we'll, get, we'll move all those, clean the edge up. And I'm not very happy with this rather bumpy bit on the tail of the board. So I'm going to use another function which is called defeature. And all I do there is select the area I want, a bit around it in fact, and choose the defeature button, which is that one there, and it smooths it out. So that's a reasonable application. It's removed a bit of the wax detail, but uh, I don't think that's terribly important. So now we've got a pretty much hole filled thing except for this end. Um, and I'm going to show you two methods 
uh, for filling in that end. One is watertight and remesh. And all you do there is choose, you can uh, apply a watertight and remesh, and it completely watertights that object. But it does it with a curve, and that's fully invented um, surface. There's no, there's no, was never any texture for that surface, of course. So that's one way, but possibly a better way. Well, it depends on your choice, of course. But a better way, I'm going to cancel this and show you just a hole fill, and I'm going to do a flat hole fill. So again, I go up to the hole fill function, and I choose flat this time and click on it, and that is a hole fill. And in fact, this is probably already watertight, but I can, I can always check for that. So I'm gonna accept that, and it says it's already watertight. So I don't have to reapply the watertighting function. And we can in fact check that by clicking on the, um, Clicking on the file, right clicking on the file and looking at its properties, on the mesh, sorry, and looking at its properties. And it's telling me that it is watertight and giving me a whole lot of other Bits of information on the volume, dimension, center of gravity, etc., etc. So there we've got a pretty good thing, but now we have to reapply the texture. So I'm clicking on the reapply texture button. And this is going to be interesting because part of it it has texture for, and part of it is invented surface. So it has no texture, so it interpolates the texture it has over that new surface. And you'll get an idea of how well that how well it does it. And there we go. As you can see on the end, it's taken that stripe. It's also actually chosen some texture of targets. It's pretty done a pretty good job on the edge of filling in those holes using the red and the and the the white or the cream color. Um, considering that that is all invented surface at the end, it's done a reasonable job of projecting the texture onto it. Now what I'm going to do is just show you the texture file of the old one, which is, as you can see, I was up in the top texture file. Now I'm going to show you the texture file of the part. And it has filled the 4096 by 4096 pixel space with the, the image that contains only the part that we're, we're looking at. So this is a new texture file. I can now export this mesh and I'm going to choose the OBG which is a format that exports a mesh, a texture file and a relationship between the two. So there they are, there's the, the mesh one, that's the texture file we can, we can look at again. There's the MTL file, which is the relationship file, which we can look at in Notepad. And it's just the relationship between the texture file and the mesh file. And this is the mesh file with all the mesh coordinates in it, looking at it in Notepad. So that's how you keep and maintain texture through an edit on an object of your choice.
Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on texture.